Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning prayer and devotion time again today on this Tuesday, February the 27th. Uh, we need to pray for Chris. Um, uh, Kristen had requested prayer for him a couple of weeks back when he had back surgery, and he initially had a very good recovery, uh, but he has been uh, experiencing intense pain recently and needs a touch of the Lord. So let's remember him in our prayers today. Uh, also, remember others who are experiencing back pain, uh, chronic problems with Carolyn Rogers, Becky Wilson, Rebecca Williams, Britt Moore, Cindy Page, Pam Williams' daughter Jenny, Brianna Williams, Johnny Nelson, Terry Nelson, Jennifer Williams, Tammy Lawson, and also Elveda Walker has both lower back and hip pain. Virgil Pulliam, Rose Brown, June Coffer, and Sister Judy Williams' mom, as well as Jimmy Moore, um, suffer with arthritis pain. So let's continue to pray for them. Uh, Venus uh, just made us aware last night that Sue Plunk is in the hospital with severe sepsis and is on a ventilator. She also needs prayer for her finances. Kenny Burns, um, as I mentioned to you yesterday, in his battle with cancer, uh, has developed pneumonia and uh, was in the hospital, uh, became septic. Um, they treated him for these things and he came down with pneumonia again and his cancer treatments have been at a standstill uh, due to his other health issues. So until he gets stronger, he cannot have any more uh, cancer treatments and they are uh, placing him on hospice care. Um, Mr. Jennings, a neighbor of Carmen's family, has been on hospice care uh, for the past couple of weeks or so and we want to continue praying for him and his wife Jenny as well as for others uh, who are continuing to battle cancer and we'll mention their names as we pray together today. Jamie Joe's cousin Maisie uh, has a brain tumor. Uh, Darling Virginia are cancer free but continuing with precautionary treatments uh, to make sure that uh, they stay in remission so let's continue lifting them up. Pray for those with heart problems again today. Uh, the children on our list who need our prayers, let's keep lifting them up. Pray for those who are dealing with uh, shingles, which is very, very painful. Um, and we have uh, three on our list who have been battling this chronically. And then Sister Emily DeLott just added to our list a couple of weeks ago uh, dealing with a shingles outbreak. Pray for Tracy in her uh, struggle with MS. Uh, she's needing her home to sell so that she can shorten her daily commute, and this will make it easier on her uh, as she battles the disease process. Also, Pastor Marty DeLott, Sarah Stroop, and Riley March needing healing of MS. Pray for those with migraine headaches, those who suffer with dementia and memory loss, as well as those who are battling diabetes currently. I want to give God praise for much, much better blood sugar numbers. Uh, this is my second week uh, starting out good with um, good morning blood sugar numbers. And this is quite a turnaround. And I want to give God the glory for, uh, for that. Uh, those with Parkinson's disease uh, need our continued prayers. My dad, my mother-in-law among them, Vivian, Russ, Tim Workman, Kristen's friend Matt, also needing healing of Parkinson's. Pray for those with respiratory issues. Uh, those who have chronic lung conditions include Robbie Northrup, Kendra Ortiz, Gary Lee, Dee's mother Carolyn, and Pam's aunt Nancy Collins. Uh, we need to pray for those uh, who are dealing with uh, seasonal respiratory uh, situations brought on by viruses and, um, and other uh, types of lung conditions, bronchitis, uh, pneumonia, uh, these are greatly increased in the winter season. Today it's going to be uh, supposed to be 79 degrees here in Puxico and um, the thing is these weather changes really are significant in this as well. Not just the cold weather but the extreme changes which we experience so often here in Missouri. So let's be praying for all those dealing with lung issues Pray for Sherry, who needs a liver transplant. Those with stomach problems need our continued prayers. Um, we're praying for continued recovery for several who have suffered stroke in the past, including Anthony Sifford, Wayne Owens, Buddy Randolph, Billy Huey, Carmen's cousin Kelly, Johnny's nephew Joey, 
Sue's nephew Dwayne, and more recently Sandra Julius and John Sutter. Uh, we're continuing to pray for JR as he recovers from surgery recently. Brother David Kent uh, with partial paralysis and needing a miracle uh, healing. Pastor Chris Dew uh, who has been down with Guillain-Barre syndrome for well over a year. And uh, this of course causes financial issues as well as um, just overall discouragement in battling a long-term illness like that. But he has made tremendous progress. And let's pray today for him and his family that God will continue uh, to strengthen him uh, to recover from this disease. Lucy uh, experienced great trauma in a motorcycle accident, had to have part of her skull removed uh, and replaced. And I haven't ha had an update on her recently, but let's continue to pray for her recovery. Pray for those with mobility issues among them, Renee, Sammy, Sheila, Donna, and Chris. Uh, Chris is uh, Ben's stepmother, Ben Ramey's stepmother, and she was accepted into the rehab facility over the weekend, so we praise God for that and believing for her uh, recovery uh, there. Uh, Carmen's friend is awaiting test results from a biopsy. We're praying for that situation. Uh, Brother Pulliam has been sick with a viral illness, probably the same thing that's been going through our congregation. In fact, we decided to uh, dismiss our service uh, this Wednesday just to let this pass over as uh, so many in our church have uh, come down with the same symptoms um, just a day apart from one another. So we're going to let this pass over and encourage those who um, are well to just attend the community revival service here uh, tomorrow night. Uh, other health needs we're praying for, Regina. Eddie, Lois, Venus, Randy, Robbie, Marshall, Cheryl LaChance's uncle, Kristen's friend Ann, Meredith, Robin, Cheryl Ogden, Bob and Shirley Perkins, Jessica, Judy's brother, Michelle Clark, Devin Huff, and George Tibbs. Uh, we're praying for those who are in nursing homes again today as they constantly need our uplifting, our military personnel and their families. Let's keep praying for them and pray for Gracie and Johnny here awaiting word of their next assignment any day now. Uh, pray for peace in these um, tense situations and wars that are ongoing uh, in the Middle East, in Ukraine, uh, and then as I mentioned, tensions in other parts of the world. Uh, we definitely need uh, the Lord's guidance um, as we go through these perilous times. Uh, pray for our missionaries today. We have missionaries who will be coming into Missouri next week and be basing out of our evangelist quarters here in Puxico. They'll be in service with us on Sunday the 10th, uh, but we're praying for Brother and Sister Brian, uh, missionaries to Haiti, uh, as they not only will have service with us, but uh, they will be participating in the camp meeting at Black River Coliseum, and that's a great opportunity for them to expand their connections with uh, pastors in our region. So pray God's favor that they will uh, be able to raise a lot of funds through that. Uh, our North American missionaries as well needing our constant prayers and we're believing for revival in every city. Spiritual and family needs. We have many families dealing with situations. The Cummins family, the Clark family, the Marlin family, the Moore family, the Williams family, the Pulliams, the Biddicks, the Perkins, let's keep praying for all of them, for lost loved ones, uh, for Beulah's granddaughter, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Jr., uh, Jeffrey, needing reconciliation in his family, and his wife needs healing. Uh, pray for Shirley and many others like her who are uh, dealing with thoughts of suicide, uh, those battling hopelessness, and that helpless feeling that leads them into uh, the depths of depression. Jenny Perkins' sister Lisa, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in great need of God's help. Annette and Dave, Marsha's friend Ashley, and Marsha's friend Linda, uh, some battling depression. Terry needing salvation. David needing to return to the Lord. Uh, many um, prodigals needing to return to the Lord. Pray for Colton. Uh, pray for others among our youth who are being pulled very, uh, very hard by the world right now. And we want to see them develop stability 
in their relationship with God at this crucial stage in their life. Rose Brown and her family needing salvation. Uh, our Mingo RCF residents, uh, we're thanking God for what he's doing there and praying for it to continue. Uh, pray for our Job Corps students and alumni um, and pray for uh, the community revival here in Puxico that's going on this week and also the camp meeting next week in Poplar Bluff. Those who are battling addiction need our prayers. Jacob, Josh, Allen, Ashley, Dawson, Charles, Frank, William, and Dana. Uh, Stephanie and her children um, needing restoration and relationships. Praying for salvation for Johnny's nieces and nephews. Uh, we're lifting up Belinda again with her unspoken needs and also the financial situation, discouragement that she's battling, issues with her furnace. Uh, Regina and her family have unspoken needs. Rebecca Rush, Terry's youngest sister, Robin, Johnny Nelson's niece, Jessica, Venus's daughters, Johnny's family, uh, his brothers, sisters, and mother, Tracy Powers, Judy Williams' family, all with unspoken needs. Regina's daughter, Chelsea, uh, applied for a job and is needing God's favor uh, during that process. Uh, Belinda is needing to find a teaching position and we are praying for peace and comfort for the Crossnell family and the Ware family, uh, both who lost a family member um, in recent days. Other families have lost someone recently as well. We're going to continue uh, to lift them up this morning uh, in our prayers. A good morning to each of you. God bless you for uh, joining me today. I thank you so much for that. Kristen's asking us to pray for her friend's grandpa. Uh, who needs Jesus and needs a miracle today. Uh, we're praying for Laura also. She has COVID and is in the hospital in Cape. Uh, Pam has shared that need with us. So good morning to you as well, Pam. Uh, Carmen, um, good to see you this morning. And we definitely want to pray against these high winds today. Um, in our area, they're not calling for tornadoes, but um, very strong winds uh, as there's been this huge temperature shift. Uh, good morning, Johnny and Terry. Good to see you all today. Sherman with us. Uh, ben is with us today. And Judy, uh, we thank God for each of you and others who are uh, signing on as we go here. Each day uh, when I go back and check the comments at the end of prayer, I don't see very many on there. But then as soon as I sign off, there will be 25 or 30 comments. So evidently there's something I haven't figured out in how to view um, the feed and maybe I'm not viewing it from the proper uh, settings so if I miss your request today just know that we will definitely add it to the list and I will pray uh, for that personally um, as soon as I uh, see it and I know our other friends are doing the same so thank you for joining us for prayer this morning and uh, and for devotion let's go to the word of the Lord this morning Romans chapter 8 we're going to read verses 1 through 14 from the New King James Version as we start a, a new series this morning that will carry us at least through uh, the end of this week. I appreciate your prayers as I seek the will of God for um, the message for Saturday night of this revival here in Puxico and uh, just asking you to pray for special anointing, uh, not only upon myself, but upon uh, our worship team as well, who will be leading worship in that service uh, hosted by Life Chapel Assembly of God this uh, Saturday night. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. 
So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he, in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. After encountering uh, Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul shifted from attacking Christians to dedicating his life to sharing the message of Jesus Christ. And this book of Romans is perhaps the most robust explanation that Paul gives of the gospel. And it was written to a church that was experiencing significant division. Some believed that salvation was exclusively for Jews, and others believed the truth that Jesus offers is a new way available to both Jews and uh, Gentiles. And so we're going to be taking a closer look at this over uh, the next uh, several days, and I believe we can gain a deeper understanding uh, through these writings of Paul. Today we want to talk about three things that Christians are free from. Number one, uh, Romans 8 and 1 tells us that we are free from condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation is the enemy's tool to shame us for our sin, and it differs from conviction, where the Holy Spirit uh, gently reminds us of our identity in him. As followers of the Lord, we are no longer bound by the weight of guilt and shame. And so conviction motivates us to, to change, to do better. Condemnation presses us down and tells us that our situation is hopeless. And Paul said, we are free from that uh, if we are in Christ. The second thing that he tells us that we are free from is sin. He said, you who are not in the flesh but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him, Romans 8 and 9. So uh, Jesus' love for us led him to Calvary's cross, and we receive uh, his spirit uh, through faith in him, and the Spirit empowers us, freeing us from the need to give in to our sinful desires. I hear this all the time, and it, it troubles me to see how many people are still, uh, they're proclaiming grace, but they're living still under the law in their mindset, in their reality, because they simply are not walking in the Spirit. What the law required people to do was it was the word on the outside of us, um, and it was through sheer willpower that we are to follow the law. But the problem is, was, is that our, our flesh is sinful, and without the impartation of God's Spirit and just doing it through the will of our flesh, it's like asking the fox to guard the hen house. It's not going to, um, it's not going to work. And so I hear people say all the time, you know, we're going to continue to sin, and and um, and it's just the way that it is because we're just we're just all sinners. But that's not what Paul said. Now I understand that we all do sin and we all mess up. But if we believe that we have to sin, then we believe that the gospel of Christ is insufficient. He has given us power over sin. If we walk in the Spirit, we will not sin. I have never sinned one time when I was walking in the Spirit, when I was being led of the Spirit. Now I've sinned plenty of times when I failed to follow the leading of the Spirit or to walk in the Spirit. So we're living in a different time. We're living in the grace dispensation. We have to shed the law mindset that says we have to do this on our own. We have the Spirit of Christ. If indeed His Spirit is in us, we are free from sin. Sin has no dominion over us, and we should practice living uh, above sin as the Spirit empowers us uh, to do so. Now, the best way to do that is just one day at a time, 
one situation at a time uh, following the leading of the Spirit. So he has freed us from the need to give in to our sinful desires. Um, it's not no longer the word on the outside of us, just an instruction manual, but Jeremiah said that it's going to be written in the fleshly tables of our hearts. And so when God put his spirit on the inside of us, he gave us victory over sin. So there's no condemnation, and we are free from sin. And thirdly, we are free from death. If the spirit of him, Romans 8 and 11 says, who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Because Jesus conquered death, we no longer have to fear it. As children of God, death is simply the transition into an eternity of enjoying God's presence forever and ever. And I, I was telling my class this Sunday, my leadership challenge class, about the ditch on both sides of the road. On one side of the road is once you're saved, you're always saved. You, you know, nothing, no deed that you do is going to, you're not, you can't backslide, so on and so forth. That's a dangerous mindset. But many times, uh, especially among Pentecostals, we have another mindset that leans toward a salvation by works, that we have to be very careful that we don't start believing that we are earning our salvation somehow. It is by the grace of God that we are uh, who we are. Um, but on, the, on this side of the road, this ditch says uh, we're not saved until the pearly gates click behind us and we better keep working as hard as we can and make sure we never make a mistake. That's also the wrong mindset. The truth is I'm saved right now. I have eternal life right now. It just has not manifested yet because I'm still in this mortal body. But I have no reason to fear death today because Jesus Christ has made me free from condemnation, from sin, and from death. And I'm so thankful today to have that knowledge. And so let's not fear the things the enemy would try to put upon us today. God has given us not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And we need to walk with God in confidence. I feel this today so strongly uh, in the Holy Ghost. We need to uh, we need to walk in the Spirit and, um, and be thankful that we live in this dispensation of grace and we do not have to live under the mindset of the law any longer. Let's just give the Lord thanks for that today. Lord, we thank you today that you have made us free. And he who the Son has set free is free indeed. Yes, Lord, your Spirit indeed does dwell inside of me and i thank you for that i thank you for power over condemnation over sin and even over death today help me not to forget that help me not to begin to walk according to the will of my flesh again and put myself back under that expired dispensation of law that is of no use anymore i pray god you would help me today to not just view your word as a, a, a list of instructions that i would read off of a page but let me understand, God, that you've already put those principles in my heart today that I can live successfully for you. I give you the praise for this today, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you that we can come to your throne of grace with confidence this morning. And I believe right now, God, that you are ministering healing where it's needed. As we began to call these names out today, uh, we, uh, we call them in this prayer gathering so that we can unify together around these needs. But Lord, I believe even as we begin to mention those needs, before we even offered a formal prayer, you are already dispatching angels and you are already beginning to minister in these situations. And so we thank you and we praise you for each one that's receiving a miracle right now. For Chris and for others with back pain, those with arthritis today, those with mobility problems. Uh, we lift up today Sue and Kenny. These are battling sepsis and pneumonia and those uh, who are on hospice care today. God, you're able, Lord, to deliver from the most dire circumstance. And we thank you, Lord. Right now, you're touching those who are battling cancer. We praise you for Julia's healing, for Pam and Jim and Maggie and Lynn uh, their healing today for Marcia's co-workers aunt and Linda Young for Rebecca Peterson and Amy Dees 
Cheryl and Diane, Heather and Dennis, Dwayne and Claire, Alice and Scott, Michelle's sister Cindy, Marcia's friend's grandparent, Daniel Dickinson, Valerie, Betty, Ari, Jamie Joe's grandfather, Gladys, Jordan, and Christine, and Maisie, each one of these today receiving their touch because of your grace, God. We believe right now, hallelujah, for your virtue to flow. And we give you the praise for their healing right now. We praise you for darling Virginia right now. Lord, that they're cancer free. And Lord, you're carrying them through these remaining treatments. Those with heart problems today, we celebrate your healing touch for them. Dobbin, uh, Donnie and Robin and Chaney, Jenny's dad and Doyle, Holly, Amy, Cheryl, Brother Morris, Kelly, Janie's nephew, Blaine and Kenny, Mike Sappington, Joyce, Sister Arnold, David Duggar, Bud Taylor, Michelle's mother, and Jimmy Warren. Every child today you're touching right now, Lord, with your healing power. Stella, Darla's granddaughter, Emily, Bailey May, Baby G, Abram, Abel, Tano, Brantley, and Elsie. Lord, those who are battling shingles, those battling illness today, those with migraine headaches, uh, we believe for Marcia and Beth and Marcia's co-worker son and Melena. And along with her other health issues, God, we pray your healing touch for those suffering with dementia right now. Vivian and Kristen's dad, Johnny's mom, Melena's mother, Ben's stepdad, Tom, those with diabetes, Lord. We believe for Holly and Grady, for Lola, for Natalie, for JR, Rebecca, Rose, Evie, Emily, Michael, Anthony, Steve, Tim, Cindy, Lloyd, Titus, Christian, Cheryl, Brother Pulliam. And Jimmy, right now, God, you are the miracle worker. Hallelujah. We praise you for healing of Parkinson's disease today. Lord, for healing of lung conditions, healing of liver problems and stomach problems today. Hallelujah. Lord, for Doug and for Oscar and for Dave battling kidney problems, we proclaim your healing. For those going through their continued recovery stages today that we've called out in prayer we believe, God, for completion of the work. Hallelujah, Lord, for these today who are awaiting test results, for Brother Pulliam and others in our congregation who are battling this viral illness, uh, we speak healing right now. We thank you, Lord, for those that you've already brought through. Hallelujah, and given victory over this illness. Uh, we praise you, God, for these others today with health needs that we've mentioned who are receiving their answer right now. We receive those answers by faith. Those who are in nursing homes, our military personnel, our missionaries, both globally and here in North America, those who are overseas right now and those who are here in the States on deputation, we believe, God, for your help for them, that you will provide the finance that they need, that you will open doors of opportunity, Lord, for them like they have never experienced before. We pray, God, for peace in our world today. We know you are the Prince of Peace and you have the answers today for each one. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that you would move in these spiritual needs, these family needs, uh, each one that we mentioned today, prodigals, those that are battling addictions, those, Lord, who have uh, family issues ongoing right now. Hallelujah. Those in need of salvation, God, we pray you would move for each one of them today. In the mighty name of Jesus, those dealing with mental health issues, we speak healing for the mind and the spirit right now. These unspoken needs that have been submitted again today for us, God, we pray that you would just take these things and do your perfect will in these situations. For Chelsea, with this job she's applied for, and Belinda needing a teaching position. For all those who are battling discouragement right now, we pray they'd be uplifted today by the prayers of your people. For those who need peace and comfort, the Crosno family and my mom's family today mourning the loss of uh, Derwood Ware, we pray, God, that you would just be with them and with others who have experienced loss recently. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for hearing our petitions today. And we thank you for your word that is a light to our path, a lamp to our feet today. We give you all the thanks for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, prayer team. Let's join together again tomorrow morning right here on Facebook at 7.30 a.m. If you know someone who isn't on Facebook, you can let them know that can find these videos on YouTube as well. Usually within an hour after we go off the air, they're available there. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for staying with me a little longer than usual this morning. 
but I thoroughly enjoyed sharing that devotion with you and pray you were blessed by it. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'll see you tomorrow.